you know, I think it comes to compost. I think people get a little bit intimidated. What's up guys, Jason over here at Cog Kill Farm and the Cog Kill Farm Gang. Today, we talking compost, Cog Kill Farm style. Today I'm gonna show you the easiest way and the way we do compost here. You know, I think it comes to compost, I think people get a little bit intimidated. There's like three reasons that, in my opinion, why people don't compost. And the first one is, is they think it's complicated. You know, you, you, you read about it, you see these guys with the thermometers, and they start talking about you got to mix this percentage of green with this percentage of brown, and your carbon ratio, and all this mathematics. Yes, those guys are technically right, and their compost probably breaks down a lot faster. Don't let it intimidate you. Don't. I am so confused. And another reason, my opinion is, is the time factor. You know, you have to go out there and water it. You got to go out there and turn it. You got to turn it so many times a week and water it so many times a week. And to me, that's another reason is the time factor because you may get home from work and the last thing on your mind is, is turning your compost pile. Or you got things going on, you got children, you got kids, you got birthday parties, you got school, you got homework, you got life. And that may be the reason why you don't compost because you don't think you have time to do it. And the third reason is, is you don't have the equipment. I don't own a compost tumbler. I don't own a compost bin. I don't have the stuff to do it. It's not gonna work. I'm here to tell you, right now that none of those you, you don't have to worry about none of that you can compost the way I compost and anybody in the world can do it this is my compost now this is the one that we add a lot of chicken scraps to chicken scraps kitchen scraps to we got a bucket in our kitchen it's got a lid on it and we dump all our kitchen scraps in there coffee grounds egg shells vegetables the usual suspects you know there's a lot of people that want to know what you can compost and what you can't compost you know of course meats you don't want to try to compost meats for several reasons but mainly is you don't want to get sick and you don't want to attract wild animals to your compost bin <laughs> Most of our stuff is when we clean out chicken coop, we get the shavings right here and lots and lots of kitchen scraps. We got tea bags in here, we got eggshells, we use white paper towels, I throw them in here, banana peels, there's a strawberry, a onion, and lots of leaf mulch when we got it falling. I just cut down a bunch of stinging nettle. I'll throw that in here. Stinging nettle also makes a great compost tea. I'll try to do more about that later. Um, Jeff Poppin, the barefoot gardener, he loves stinging nettle, especially for compost and compost tea. Teas made from various weeds can have an exhilarating effect on plants in our garden that need a little perking up. Especially in the small backyard garden, a homemade brew could be just what's needed to supply the missing nutrients, microbes, and minerals. One of the most common homemade teas for your garden is made from stinging nettle, a plant which stands alone in the world of plants. Uh, if you want to check him out, I'll put links down to a playlist below about Jeff Poppin. He is a biodynamic farmer, which is like permaculture on roids. But here's what I do. I just throw it in there. I don't worry about green to brown ratio. I don't worry about water in mine. I don't worry about the temperature of mine. I don't come out here with a thermometer. I just set it and forget it. I'm in no rush. I got things I got to do. Ain't nobody got time for that. But check this out. See, I don't want you to be intimidated anymore. You can see it's starting to break down. This right here was once this. I just put it in here and then forget about it. It's gonna break down on its own. Mother nature's gonna mother nature. I can guarantee you that. And you don't need one of these fancy dancy compost bins. You know, people worry about, oh, I don't have a compost bin, I don't have a tumbler. You don't need any of that. A lot of times, I just like, if I clean out the chicken coops, or the, or the, uh, the, I clean out the goat house where they got a lot of waste hay, I don't put that in anything. I just pile it up in a spot in my yard. You know, out of the way, because I don't want people to see it, but I just pile it up. 
and of course the chickens will come in there and they'll turn it for you. It will break down and turn into compost. Then final method that I do, and I do this in my raised bed garden, and I do this every year. Y'all look at the hydrangeas. Oh, they're looking wonderful. So you can see this is a kale bed. I'm starting to pull this up. Now let me show you what I would do. I'm gonna pull all this kale up. I'm not gonna plant anything in here. What I'm gonna do from this point on is, is I'm gonna start dumping kitchen scraps in here. No compost pen, no compost tumbler. I'm dumping my stuff directly into my raised bed. It's gonna break down and turn into great humus and it's gonna be great for my garden. Composting is not hard. I've had several people ask me about composting pig manure. Do your research on pig manure before you compost it. And if you, any of you guys do use pig manure, let me know in the comments below because I would love to know more about it because I just don't. Hey guys, thanks for watching our composting video. If you want to know more about composting and biodynamic farming, check out Jeff Poppin, the barefoot farmer right over here. And if you like our channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Guys, y'all be good. Thank you.